Hello right, everyone, this is Dr. Juwan. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you very much. If you haven't done so, please hit the subscribe button and right next to it is the bell notification. When you hit that and I upload my videos, you'll be first to be notified. Also, if you're watching this on Facebook, thank you very much. I always appreciate it. Please hit the like button down below and if you find this information valuable, please share with a friend. Okay, so I got an email recently from one of my viewers and she was asking me, she's not a type 2 diabetic, however, she was diagnosed recently with being insulin resistant. And she's kind of curious on what that is and what can she do, what can she do naturally to reverse it? Because being insulin resistant and being a type 2 diabetic can be reversed. And I'll tell you in this video. So with insulin resistance and type 2 diabetics, that is commonly associated with how did I get it? and it's typically associated with it being the chronic, with the chronically obese. However, if you have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, if you have poor health, if you're on medications, yes, that may lead to being a type 2 diabetic. So all roads do re lead to lo uh, Rome. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what type 2, you know, insulin resistant is and also too, what can you do to avoid it because it is reversible. So let's back up first. So what's, what is insulin? Insulin is a hormone produced by the pancreas and it has a couple functions which is absolutely phenomenal. One, it helps control blood sugar levels. It helps lower the, the amount of sugar in the blood. Also too, it helps regulate where the nutrients are going. So it regulates the nutrients like proteins, dietary fats, minerals, vitamins, all those essential things that are needed for our bodies to work. In addition, if you're eating too many carbohydrates, one of the roles of insulin is to store all those excessive amounts of carbohydrates to fat. This is why it is hard to lose weight if you're taking in an excessive amount of carbohydrates. When your insulin levels have elevated, it shuts, out, it shuts down the fat burning process. The body is just simply saying, hey, you're giving me carbohydrates for energy. Why should I use my, your stored fat for fuel? I'm going to shut this railroad railroad pathway down. Okay. Also, too, when you have too much floating insulin levels, it does stop the the body from absorbing nutrients, and this is why you're constantly hungry when you're tipping on the borderline of being insulin resistance. So the question is, what is insulin resistance? So remember, the one of the functions of pancreas is to control the blood sugar levels. So what happens being insulin resistance? the cells just don't respond to the insulin anymore. It's kind of like a lock and key, okay? The lock and key method, the key doesn't work because the lock is broken. So what happens is that the body makes more sugar because the body is not, lower, it's not being lowered by the pancreas, by the insulin. The pancreas fails to receive the signal that, hey, we need more insulin levels. I'm sorry, we need more insulin being released. So what happens to you, the body, again, the body sugar stays elevated in the system. So this can lead to type two diabetes. Now the question is, well, what are the symptoms? The symptoms are, again, constant hunger, craving. Why cravings? Because the body is not absorbed the nutrients. So in addition, you're gonna have a decreased storage of sugar and an increased storage of fat because the body actually, believe it or not, likes to store sugar in the form of, the simplest form is glucose. Now, glucose, 75% 75, 75 of glucose is stored in the muscles and 25 is stored in the liver. So when you work out or when you're going in between meals, where is that energy pulled from? It's pulled from the muscles, also to the liver. So the question is, how do you know if you're insulin resistant? Well, when you're doing blood work, the blood sugar level should be at 100 milligrams per deciliter. Okay, so if it's low, you're looking at hypoglycemic. If it's high, you're looking at hyper. Now, when I work with my patients, when I do a comprehensive blood screen, that is the best way to indicate where you are with your blood sugar levels if you're, if you're toe tapping on being insulin resistance is necessary. And I look at three things. One of the things I, I look at is the hemoglobin H1C. What is that? That is a main indicator that tells me what your blood sugar levels are doing for the past 90 days. Also too, I do want to look at the insulin levels. 
And three, I do want to look at the fasting glucose because the fasting glucose, the levels being a functional medicine practitioner, I'm looking at the optimal between 75 to 80. Now, conventional medicines, they say, hey, 70 to 100. However, for optimal health, I, I want to make sure that my patients are in between 75 and 80. That is optimal health. Now, su subjective, how can you tell? So research has shown that what happens is that the body stores fat in the upper back and that has some link to being insulin resistant. So if you, if you could reach around and reach in between your scapula blades and grab a chunk of fat and or, and or on your love handles, grab a chunk of fat, this could mean that you are developing insulin resistance. Now with that, with that, with just that testing, you can see that a lot of people are developing insulin resistant and or fatty liver disease. The question, how, you, how do I know when you're developing fatty liver? All you gotta do is be able to grab a chunk of fat and you are. So what can you do to naturally reverse it? First and foremost, I'm always saying, let's work with a diet. Whatever got you there, you could, if you stop doing, it will be reversed because what got you there? Eating all those carbohydrates. Remember, carbohydrates increases blood sugar and then, then sends a signal to the pancreas to release insulin. Too many carbohydrates, the pancreas says, hey man, I can't do it anymore, and stores it as fat. So lower the carbohydrates and increase the vegetables. Vegetables have a profound effect on the body. I always recommend an herb. It's an herb that has a glucose disposal agent, commonly known as chromium. In addition to chromium, chromobicolinate, Okay, you could take that with a carbohydrate meal. In addition to chrome bicolinate, berberine. Berberine is, no, is shown to have phenomenal results on lowering the insulin resistance. In addition, increase your potassium. We should be taking 4,700 milligrams of potassium daily. That is shown proven to lower your insulin levels. In addition, vitamin B1. Vitamin B1, 100 milligrams upon waking, will help control Again, help lower that insulin levels because what happens is when you're taking in a lot of carbohydrates and refined sugars, it zaps your B vitamins, believe it or not. This is one of the reasons why your nervous system takes a hit. This is why you feel fatigued. Another thing, get more sleep. Seven to eight hours is best. Sleep controls hormones and, it's a, and sleep is a main regulator, regulator of, of, hormone, of hormone, how it functions throughout the body. So sleep is optimal. Another thing, get into the gym or get bands. Get into some weight resistant routine. Why? Because this is the best way to improve insulin sensitivity. Remember, we store 75% of the glucose in the muscles. So when you're working out, you're utilizing that stored energy. In addition, when you work out, it promotes new muscle growth. And with new muscle growth comes more insulin receptor sites. So actually you're making more receptor sites by the more increased muscle tone you have. So what happens is that these insulin receptor sites are like keyholes. So you, again, it's going to, you're basically you're making more keyholes so you could utilize more insulin so you make yourself less insulin resistance. Also protein, protein is a must. Reason being is because when you eat carbohydrates, you're increasing your, your release in insulin. When you eat dietary proteins and dietary fats, there is no insulin release. Yes, there's some insulin release in dietary proteins if you eat mass quantities, okay? So does this make sense? Good. Now the thing is, carbs are your enemy. There is no essential carbohydrates. We learn that we have essential fatty acids. We learn that we have essential proteins, okay? Essential, essential amino acids. Nobody's ever said, hey, you need a carbohydrate. Carbohydrates are a treat, okay? And carbohydrates increase insulin levels. So if, when you decrease your carbohydrate intake, you lower your insulin levels. So much research has shown that a much lower carbohydrate diet and increase your dietary fats, much like the ketogenic diet, this is where ketogenic diets are so popular and actually does make sense because when you're eating dietary fats and lean proteins, there's not that much of an insulin release. It gives your pancreas a break. So when I work with patients, I say, let's change your diet up. Let's wait about 60 days. Let's see how things go. And usually nine times out of 10, within about two to three weeks, my patients come back to me and say, my goodness, I can feel a difference already. So again, 
There's no essential carbohydrates, and that's how you got fat, because you're eating too many carbs. So what happens is that this is how the body works. This is why you can't burn calories when you're eating too many carbs, because what happens is that body fat is stored energy. And if you're taking in carbohydrates, the body is going to say to itself, hey, there's no reason for me to dip into the fat stores because you're feeding me carbohydrates. Does that make sense? So, except for the athlete who has like 10% or lower, or a female who has like 15% or lower body fat on them, they need carbs for energy because they don't have a lot of dietary, they don't have a lot of fat on them to be, to be utilized as fuel. We're not talking about the athletes. I'm talking about the average person who I deal with. Lower the carbohydrates so the body dips into the fat stores for energy. Very simple. The main problem is when you, with the, with the problem who has too much body fat, there's a hormone, it's called hormone sensitive lipase. This hormone prevents the body from burning fat for fuel because too many carbohydrates will shut this hormone off, this mechanism off. So, and idealistically, lowering the carbohydrates will signal the hormone, the sense of lipase to say, okay, let's burn fat for fuel. And this will actually reverse the insulin resistance and also to help the type two diabetic. So when I'm dealing with patients is that I always stress this, don't rely on the scale. The scale is just a number because when you're working out and you're building muscle tone, that needle might not move too much. However, how do your clothes feel? Do your clothes feel different? And yes, nine times out of 10, yes, they have increased energy, less fatigue, their bowel movements are more regular. Okay, so this is why I'm saying don't step on the scale for a measure. Let the, basically, when I work with patients, I always say, let the blood work be the starting block. Let's figure, let's see where you are, let's do some blood work, let's figure out what all those numbers are. Okay, does that make sense? Good. So basically, in summary, how do you, if you're, again, if you're a borderline insulin resistance or if you're type 2 diabetic, how do you reverse it? In summary, you want to do a lo follow a low carb diet. Remember, carbohydrates, low, low carbs, low insulin release. Take apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is phenomenal for the stomach because that's where all digestion begins. Watch portion sizes. You want to start reading labels and regulate the portion size. Bigger is not better. Again, avoid all forms of sugar as best as you can, especially high fructose corn syrup, fructose, corn syrup, corn sugars, all that stuff, again, is gonna bombard that insulin. You want to exercise regularly. Again, remember, the more muscle tone you have in your body, the more you're going to utilize the sugar level. I'm sorry, the more you're going to stabilize the sugar levels. Add cinnamon. Add cinnamon to food. food cinnamon does wonders for regulating blood sugar. Also, too, stay away from refined carbs. Refined carbs are deadly. That's how, that's how you got here in the first place. Watch your alcohol levels, especially beer. Beer is just gluten. It will cause non-alcoholic fatty liver disease eventually alcoholic fat liver disease. <laughs> and avoid a sedentary behavior, get up off your butt, run, do something, walk, exercise, okay? So again, it's, if you're dedicated, I always tell my patients this, if you're, aesthetic, if you're dedicated to starting somewhere, you not only wanna look good, but you wanna feel good as well. Let's, you know, let's do the blood work, let's see where your levels are at. Because if you have an insulin resistant type issue, this may be the number one thing, and I tell my patients it's the number one thing that may be holding you back for achieving your goal. Hope you, hope you liked the video. Please share with a friend. Please hit the like button down below. Please leave a comment. I'm always happy to read them. Thank you very much. Have a good day.